In this video, we are going to define one particular kind of uh, implication basis, the canonical basis. But to define it, we'll need another notion, a new notion, a notion of a pseudo-closed set. Well, a pseudo-closed set is a set that is not closed, but in some ways it behaves like a closed set. It has some properties which make it similar to a closed set. In particular, every closed set contains the closure of every its proper subset. This is not precisely true about pseudo-closed sets, but something similar holds. A pseudo-closed set must contain the closure of every its pseudo-closed proper subset. And actually this is the definition of a pseudo-closed set. So let's say we, we have a closure operator that maps x to x double prime. Um, it's defined on a finite set M. In this case, we say that an attribute subset P is called pseudo-closed if it is not closed, that is P doesn't equal P double prime. And also, uh, for every pseudo-closed proper subset Q of P, we have that the closure of Q, Q double prime, must be a subset of P. Well, this definition looks kind of circular, because we define pseudo-closed sets using the notion of a pseudo-closed set. But this is okay. Um, note that here we refer to only pseudo-closed proper subsets of, of set P. So if P has no subsets at all, then the second part of the definition holds vacuously. Or it may happen that P has subsets, but all its subsets are closed. Then they cannot be pseudo-closed because of the first part of the definition. And then the second part of the definition holds vacuously again. To put it another way, if all subsets of P, all proper subsets of P are closed and P is not closed itself, then it's a pseudo-closed set. And that's how we uh, can get the minimal pseudo-closed sets. And then the definition works inductively. Okay, so we're talking about pseudo-closed sets with respect to closure operator, but for in some cases we'll be talking about pseudo-closed sets with respect to a formal context. In this case we will call them pseudo-intents. So a pseudo-intent is a pseudo-closed attribute set. And similarly, uh, we can say that a pseudo-extent is a pseudo-closed object set. Because remember, we have closure operator defined not only on attributes, but we have another closure operator defined on objects. And so both definitions, pseudo-intent and pseudo-extent, make sense. Um, we'll need mainly the first one, at least in this lecture. So pseudo-intent is a pseudo-closed attribute set. And now we can define the Duquesne gig or a canonical basis. So this is the canonical basis of a uh, formal context, the canonical basis of implications. And it's all often called the Duquesne gig basis because Duquesne and gig are two people who invented it. Before defining the canonical basis, let's extend the notion of soundness and completeness to an arbitrary closure operator. We have defined it only for a formal context. And now we're going to say that an implication set L is sound or complete with respect to closure operator double prime if it is sound or complete with respect to the following formal context. Here the objects are, well, here the attributes are the same attributes M on which our closure operator is defined. Um, the set of objects is just the set of all sets, all subsets of M closed with respect to this closure operator. So the set G, the set of objects, is the set of all sets of the form A double prime, where A is an arbitrary subset of M. And uh, uh, we put a cross between a set, which is an object in our case, and an attribute M if this attribute M is part of this set. So that's how we define the formal context. And uh, we say that L is sound and complete with respect to, to a closure operator if it's sound and complete 
or sound or complete with respect to this formal context derived from this closure operator. Now, this is a theorem which says that for finite M and a closure operator double prime, the following set of implications is sound complete and non-redundant. Now, it contains implications of the form P implies P double prime, where P is a pseudo-closed attribute set. And this is the theorem we're going to prove now. First of all, let's prove soundness. Well, soundness is easy. Uh, soundness means that all these implications, implications must indeed hold for our closure operator. But yes, if uh, we take a set P, then this set P implies P double prime. So this holds for any uh, P which is a subset of M. Completeness. Well, let's assume that our set of implications L is not complete. Then there must be at least one implication. X implies Y, respected by every object and tent of the context we defined in the previous slide. So, respected by set A double prime. And at the set, at the same time, this implication, X implies Y, doesn't follow from L. That's the meaning of incompleteness. So we have a valid implication which cannot be, which doesn't follow from, from our set L. But then if it doesn't follow from our set L, uh, we have that Y is not a subset of L of X. And on the other hand, because X really implies Y, Y is a subset of X double prime. But this means that L of X is not closed. Let's check pseudo closed proper subsets of L of X. Let's, let's take one such pseudo closed subset. Let's call it Q. Um, now, because Q is pseudo closed, the implication Q implies Q double prime must be part of L. By definition of L, L includes all implications whose premise is pseudo closed. So it must include this one too. But then Q double prime must be a subset of L of X. Q is a subset of L of X. And if, and we have an implication that Q implies Q double prime. So Q double prime must be included in L of X. It follows that L of X is pseudo closed itself because it is not closed and it contains this, the closure of all its pseudo closed proper subsets. But then L must contain the implication L of X implies L of X double prime because L contains all the implications with pseudo closed premises. Okay. So this means that L of X equals L of X double prime, but L of X double prime is closed, which means that L of X is also closed. And this gives us a contradiction. So our initial assumption that L is not complete was incorrect. L is indeed complete. What remains is to show non-redundancy. So non-redundant means that Whenever you remove one of the implications, let's say P implies P double prime, um, you cannot infer it or it doesn't semantically follow from what remains in L. So let's denote what remains by L minus. L minus is L without this implication P implies P double prime. We know that P respects all implications of the form Q implies Q double prime in L minus because P is pseudo closed. And a pseudo closed subset must contain the closures of all its pseudo closed proper subsets. So if Q is uh, a proper subset of P, then Q double prime must also be part of P. And L minus contains only implications of the form Q implies Q double prime such that Q is pseudo closed. So P respects all of them. This means that L minus of P equals P. But then, because of this, the implication P implies P double prime doesn't follow from L minus. Otherwise, L minus of P would include P double prime, and it doesn't. 
this means that once we remove the implication p p double prime from l we can't get it back and therefore we can't remove any such implication from uh, our set l and this means that l is indeed non-redundant okay so this set of implications which is uh, sound complete and uh, non-redundant is a basis but it's not just any basis this is called the canonical basis or the Duquesne gig basis of uh, the corresponding closure operator double prime it is sometimes given in the, in the abbreviated form as written below so uh, we can say that p implies p double prime or we can say that p implies p double prime minus p that's the same an interesting property of this uh, canonical basis is that it is minimal in the number of implications among all equivalent implication sets there may be several implication bases corresponding to the same uh, closure operator several implication sets that are sound complete and non-redundant but it's not possible to, to get an implication set a basis that has fewer implications than the canonical basis nevertheless even though it's uh, the minimal possible basis it can still contain a lot of implications the number of implications can be exponential in the size of uh, in, in the size of m in the number of attributes and we'll see an example later